in last year. You had a trio of freshmen come into the outside hitters room. Now, this time around, they're experienced. You guys have gone through a lot together. What's the difference in feel of that room now that you're this year? Uh, can you say the beginning again? Yeah, Sorry, so, I didn't. So this time last year, you had mm -hmm. the trio of freshmen coming in, the outside hitter group, really oh, young. Yeah, yeah. And now, full year of experience. What's the difference in feel entering this year in that room? Yeah, like you said, there's a little bit more experience. Everyone on this team, except our new baby freshmen, have played for a national championship, so that's kind of a lot of experience um, under their belts just for their first season. But um, it also kind of presents this unique situation. So, like, for example, Nicklin was the last player that was a part of our team to play for a national championship as a freshman. And it could be easy to kind of fall into the mindset of, like, oh, we get there every year by accident or by mistake, or that just is an expectation. Um, so I think it's been really cool to see that young kind of now sophomore group recognize like, hey, this isn't a given, and we're gonna have to work for this, and there's a little bit more experience that comes with that, and um, so I think everyone's really excited. I know last year we were talking a lot about outside hitter and just like the growth that needed to be done there, so what have you seen now going into this year, like you said, there's more experience, a little more leadership, but what have you seen as far as like specific growth from the group? Or maybe then what do you want to still see as growth from everyone? Yeah, I mean, I think as a freshman, you kind of keep your head above water. And now I think they, mentioning that experience, they have the opportunity to kind of blossom into being their more full personality and being their true self on the court. and presenting their personalities in a way that is helpful for our team. Um, for example, like with Lindsay, she's more of like a dominant personality. And I think being a freshman, it's not easy to express that because you're like, I'm a child. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I think now her even being a sophomore, it's going to be really cool to see like her leadership and a um, little bit of that dominance kind of show through and um, kind of help to lead our team. What did you, but for yourself, what did you learn last year about what it takes to maintain efficiency as kind of the person that everybody's focusing on defensively, trying to take you out? Um, you know, we talk about a lot um, having a offense that there are attacking points at every direction. So middle, from middle back, from outside, from right side, and having four different attackers that you're supposed to defend at all times. And... What was really special and cool about our group is that ever, on, on a given night, we could have been firing on all cylinders. And so it makes it really hard for teams to defend us. And I think, you know, when someone specifically is having a night that they're on fire, then maybe they kind of shift their defense to protect that person a little bit more and it opens stuff up for other people, which is really cool. And so I think being able to have that, if one person's on fire, then it allows opportunity for others. And then if everyone's fired on all cylinders, like how do you stop us? So it's just cool to kind of see that. How is uh, teammate Hayden different than sister? <laughs> um, sometimes I kind of mesh those walls a little bit, which it's a little bit hard to kind of keep her like sister, teammate. Um, teammate, she's very competitive. Um, she wants to win, she wants to be the best, and I think that's the reason that she is able to say that she's a basketball volleyball player and kind of be in the position that she is today. Sister Hayden is a little bit more passive, and she's very like methodical and analytical and like thinks things out, really processes, and like, um, I don't know, kind of just really like thinks about stuff and is able to marinate on stuff and give like a really good response and thought out stuff. and. Um, I think that's a little bit opposite than her. Do you think you have a different relationship with her as a teammate than? Oh yeah. How do you treat, do you try to treat her differently or do you treat her, she treat you differently on the court? Well, just, it's a little bit different in the fact of like, we could say anything to each other to, the, to an extent and like we'll still love each other and be teammates and sisters. And so I think it kind of allows for that little, like a little bit more of that space of like ultimate trust. Like I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Which like maybe I wouldn't say that to a different teammate because I don't know, it might hurt their feelings. But with Hayden, I'm like, I don't know, like she's doing weird stuff. I don't know what's happening. And so it kind of allows for that space for us to be more efficient and get stuff done a lot quicker because you can have that bluntness and honesty that exists in sibling relationships. So it's been really cool to kind of see that play out. We've only gotten to see a little bit of Kennedy to this point. How would you describe her strengths and playing style as a setter? Oh, she's a stud. Um, I mean, I played against her in club my entire club career. And she just... Thank you. 
like she kind of just doesn't give a shit. Like she just like goes and like runs her offense and like puts her hitters in good positions and like um, she's a great blocker. Um, I'm really excited to see what she's gonna do this fall and kind of in this next couple weeks when we get into two days and she's just a little stud. It's been like having Nick one still around, but not necessarily being the starting setter in every drill and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's, a little, it's been a little bit different um, having her in that alternative role. Obviously, being a four-year starter, all-American setter, and it's a little bit different when now she's kind of in a, just in a different role and in a different position. But it's been good. I think last year there was five middle blockers on the team. Mm -hmm. All gone. How do you try to build a relationship with the three new middle blockers and kind of view a rapport, especially? on the block and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Caitlin has been a great addition and then we have two freshmen, so it's kind of all new people mm -hmm. as our middles, which is fun. Um, they all have very different personalities. Maggie has been very new because she spent the summer with basketball, so she's just now joining us this week. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of more like on a first base with her, like name, family, where, what do you do, where are you from, why are you, you the way you are, is more like where we're at with her. Mm -hmm. Um, with Becca, she's pretty quirky and fiery, and so it's going to be fun to see how her personality manifests on the court. And then Caitlin is just, obvious, like, we've played against her for the last three and a half years and seen the damage that she, that she can do, and so I'm just excited to go on the other side of that and be a teammate of hers and, um, yeah, see how that pans out. When you saw Kayla in the transfer portal, what was the reaction to that, knowing that she was going away from team after being on the team so much this summer? What was the reaction to see that she would decide to transfer? Yeah, I think once we knew she wasn't going to be with us, I think it kind of opened up to a lot of possibilities. She could transfer, she could go play pro, she could be done. She's, I mean, it's her seventh year, it's a lot of volleyball. Um, I wasn't that surprised, um, considering you have about three options right there. Mm -hmm. And so it's one thirty-three percent <laughs> So um, I don't think it was very surprising, and I just hope that she's successful and happy, and we love her and we'll miss her, and she's a great teammate, she's my locker buddy. Mm -hmm. So... Like a senior, knowing Final Four is waiting there in Omaha, especially after not getting the experience, the, the true atmosphere a couple years back during the, mm -hmm. the pandemic season. Right. What's that like having that kind of end of the road here for this season as a motivating factor? Yeah, it's really unique. We have the best fans in the country. Husker Nation is like you guys know that. We have the best fans in the country. And to be able to ho kind of host with it being in Omaha and have so many Husker fans there, like when in the pandemic you there was not very many fans even like there what there was a couple fans and we like run out in omaha and we're like see husker fans we're like oh my god like cry like everyone like wanted to have tears because it was like the first time we played in front of fans and they're all red in in a national championship or regional final or whatever um so i think everyone's really excited and it's very special that it's close to home and we're excited to be back in front of husker Nation. Probably know players that aren't in the Big Ten. How do you think your experience in college would have been different if you went to weren't in the Big Ten program? Mm -hmm. I came to Nebraska because I love the what Nebraska is as a volleyball program. Like I love that we have fans that are like ride or die. We love volleyball and we love Nebraska volleyball. And I love that our staff invests in people as humans and as volleyball players. And I love that our university. Um, supports us and we're not a sideshow to football like we are our own thing and that's really cool and something that i don't think you see in a lot of other, other programs and i hope that in the future there's more of that because the game of volleyball is growing and that needs to be validated and seen and heard and um i think what we have in nebraska is so special and like friends that i have that go to other schools and are in other conferences um maybe just don't have it like that which is sad and i hope they get it in the future when uh, Caitlin said when she entered the transfer portal, she wanted to fall in love with volleyball again. Yeah. Why is Nebraska a place where that can happen? Um, I think lots of players that transfer into our programs walk away saying that they learned how to love the game again. And I think it's because the way that we train makes it, makes it like learning again. And you know when you're like first in school and you're like, oh, I'm learning how to do the alphabet and this is like the coolest thing I've ever done. We like break stuff down so much that we get into how can this be a conversation? Why did you do what you do? What did you see? How can we do that different next time? And I think it, it just allows for those types of conversations to go on where we really tap into the mind and the learn, like the learning the volleyball IQ and not just 
we need you to hit this number in a game and, he, and we don't care and we need, we need to win. Like, ultimately that's what you could say it comes down to, but I think that's why people say that when they come and be, become a part of our program is because we put so much emphasis on the learning process and the growth process. When you go home from today, people ask you, what was your Big Ten Media Day experience like? What were you telling them? It was sick. <laughs> I mean, this building's really cool. I kind of forgot I was in Chicago, so I'm excited for the dinner. Because apparently it's like on the river. And it's a steakhouse, so I'm excited about that, to eat good. Um, but it was really cool. I mean, it's a huge step for women's sports and for the sport of volleyball. And um, it's really cool to be a part of this kind of unprecedented event in history. And um, you were named the pre on the preseason all conference team. What does that mean to you to be able to do that in such a competitive conference? And then also, does that motivate you to you know play at such a high level throughout the whole season that you can be on the postseason, you know, first team team? The union was picked. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's really special. I think Coach talks about every award is team award, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. If, when we have such a diverse offense, it allows people to have great nights on a given day. And, um, you know, I think it's really special. There's a lot of great players on that list. And it just goes to show how strong our conference is. And arguably, that's the strongest and most fierce conference in the country. And I think it prepares us to be able to play in matches like the national championship, considering last year's national championship had two Big Ten teams and not any other conference can say that, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I just think it's really unique and cool and special and I'm excited for the season to start.